the house I was just at the appointment for. Um, super sweet lady, it actually it was a family friend. Um, older gentleman owns the home. Um, this is probably one of the nicer homes that I'll go to appointments on. Probably the nicest I've been to actually. Um, this is actually in a gated community as you guys can see. Oh, you guys can't see it, but it is in a gated community. Um, just was in there for about an hour. Really, really good experience. Um, I'm never like a pushy guy, but I'm gonna talk about the appointment here in a second. Um, but I actually have another appointment here um, later today, which is a possible pre-foreclosure buy. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, so this is gonna be a pretty cool vlog. I'm gonna try to document that uh, seller appointment a little bit better. Maybe get some audio for you guys of seeing how I actually go and approach these meetings. Um, but I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. So before we head out and go to that second appointment, I told you guys I'd walk you a little bit through the last seller appointment I had. So this one was actually a family friend. My mom had had a conversation with a lady that my parents actually own a home out in Minnesota. And so that lady actually lives there, but her dad, who's 90 years old, now moved into a retirement home and he had that home. Um, pretty wealthy dude. And so he like, it was a tougher, kind of thing going in or in terms of a mindset because I couldn't like I I was thinking they just want the highest price but did a little breaking down and figured out a little bit of what the true motivation to sell was and so she's here um, the daughter who's still a little bit older obviously the dad's 90 so she's like in her 60s or 70s um, she was at the home she's been here for a couple weeks and she's just kind of taking care of all his taxes because he can't really do it anymore um, handling handling all the companies he used to own selling them off so they're just kind of purging everything and so this home you guys saw the video earlier is obviously pretty nice and the ARV was right around 295 to 300 um, another one sold six months ago same exact spec home this is like a small community with a gate uh, it's a gated small community is a better way of putting it and that one sold I think six months ago so I think it's weird with those gated small communities usually the prices don't fluctuate that much what I've noticed but so it'll probably go between it could go up to 305 it's probably about 300,000 I'm guessing because uh, these homes are built basically the same exact way um, just kind of cookie cutter down the line and there's only I think about 60 homes in that entire community so um, you guys can kind of get the idea of why I'm saying they don't change fluctuate much just because the own community dictates the price so um, that's where my ARV was and I pretty much offered 230 you guys saw the outside really needed nothing um, and I wish I had pictures to show you but um, I really don't take pictures I don't know why um, until I get a yes or I'm gonna go over there and sign a contract. Then it's worthwhile to go ahead and go back and take pictures, take a really detailed videos. Uh, because when I'm there taking pictures, um, I'd rather be there conversing with the homeowner. I never wanna be that guy that's just looks like it's just a piece of property. I know the homeowners see it as a lot of value. So I was there for an hour. We talked pretty much about our family relationships and stuff like that, cause I've never met her. Um, but super sweet lady there. They don't really know their direction to go on. I'm never one to push a contract really hard um, Especially in this situation with a family friend. Um, I offered as high as I could uh, Simply because it's just it basically could be a hotel But I'm not taking it under obviously and if you guys don't know a hotel means that's basically like I would buy it Put a couple thousand into it and put it right back on the market within like one or two weeks um, so it's kind of a hotel if I do wholesale it because but I Technically, it's just a very, very minor flip. Uh, but the profit margin, I think, would be between 15 and like 20,000, probably, probably averaging about 17 and a half for an investor that really has to do little to no work for the home. I mean, they could paint the cabinets, change the, uh, the carpets, um, but that was pretty much it with those homes. It definitely needed nothing on the outside. Um, but I, I didn't go the route of a buy and hold because I don't think based on the HOA, which is something I just learned about a couple days ago that you can necessarily rent out homes in those kind of communities. Um, so I still don't know positively, but I always assume the worst. So I didn't give a buy and hold price, um, which probably wouldn't be too far off. But after realtor fees and everything like that, she'd probably make if she put it through realtor and put on the market 240 to 250 after everything, especially because the realtor wanted about 
her to put in 15 to 20,000 of updates. So that really wasn't that realistic uh, for her because one, she's a little bit older. Two, she doesn't have money. Even though he's very well off, she wasn't as well off. Um, don't get me wrong, like she does well for herself, but she just wasn't at that point, especially that age to go and fix, put new tile in, new appliances, do plumbing work that just wasn't realistic. So I really had to hit those pain points. That's a little bit about that seller conversation. Um, second one today so this vlog will probably be just be these two appointments for you guys but it's something a little bit more like the next step i've really done only shown the marketing me going out there trying to prospect well this is the next step of the process process of me going out there putting out offers and i don't mind if somebody doesn't accept my offer last month i had 11 appointments and none of them got accepted now that doesn't mean i'm not going to follow up with them and go ahead and keep calling them because it just wasn't the right time a bunch of them they just needed to sell later down the year so those are really good leads they have i like to go out there still uh, simply because they remember me more than just a phone call or especially if i just make an offer over the phone um, and i like doing these appointments so um, i hope you guys did get a little insight into that i'll show you guys the next seller appointment not sure what's going to happen but um let's just go over there and see what happens All right guys, so I'm currently in the parking lot right now. This this is the, the pre-foreclosure lead I was talking about earlier. It's 2 p.m., we had appointment. Um, second time, I'm actually here because last time they canceled on me and this is one of them I've been following up like literally every single day without a text back. And I call yesterday and they say 2 p.m. should work today and there's nobody home. So this is the second time, it's taking me like 20 minutes to drive here. I'm gonna be real upset if they don't show up. Um, they literally have auction on the 20th of March or the 24th, I think, one of the two. Um, but uh, either way, it's coming up really closely here. And the dude, like literally one time I talked to him, it's like it's a weird dynamic, but apparently he was at the casino, you know, just chilling out and his home's going in foreclosure. So these sellers are a little, a little bit more interesting than most of them. But you run into this stuff. Uh, I'm going to wait here for probably another couple minutes, see if there's any activity by the home. Uh, maybe they're just late or something, which I feel like I don't really know, but I'm not gonna get an appointment. So I'll, I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. Well, they didn't show up. So I ended up just putting a little thing. You guys can see that uh, that card on the door. So they 100% will see it, but I'm gonna try to just keep following up with them. They're being really difficult. What's going on guys? So obviously you guys can see it's raining out. Uh, for here in Arizona, it actually doesn't rain a lot. So um, this is actually the first time I had, I could not go uh, door knocking, which was my plan to do all day. I wanted to hit like 30 plus homes today uh, just because my, my schedule was really open. I don't have any appointments or anything like that. Um, and I'm obviously just trying to hit as many homes as possible, but um, it should be stopping I mean, the weather app does say it should stop later this afternoon, um, but if it's raining, especially it is kind of downpouring, there's nothing I can really do. I'm not trying to go out there um, and be that weird guy that shows up to a door with pouring rain. Um, I just, I'd rather find myself doing something else. Um, so for now, I was just looking on deals on Craigslist. I was actually doing a bunch of research this morning on subject two um, and do, l learning the like the, the nitty gritty of foreclosure process in Arizona. So this is kind of the notebook I keep for all of my um, like notes for, for wholesaling, whether I go to, like this was the all in wholesaling event, like um, the big mastermind, whether I go to meetups and I learn something. So this kind of has like all my gems for the process of wholesaling and everything you need to know about it, even creative finance, which is slowly transforming into um, but for now, I'm pretty much just going to keep doing some research and then going back to Craigslist and reaching out and making offers on uh, probably a lot of properties that are for rent in the Phoenix area. I, I'm trying to at least make 10 offers a day. That's my goal. You guys can see here on my um, 
on my um, whatever this is called the planner I'm gonna start tracking how many offers I make every single day so today's the 11th um, again schedule is really free but I'm gonna start tracking how many offers if I can make 10 offers a day I'll probably be golden so um, I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit and see how many offers I have made What's going on guys? So now it is Thursday. I'm about to wrap up the vlog here for you guys. Don't want to make it too long, but um, also need to get some content for the next one. Coming up on Monday, I'm keeping on the schedule for you guys because if I were watching these videos, I'd, I'd love to have videos that come on a schedule, but I appreciate you guys being here. Don't really have too much to say, except um, probably in the next vlog. I'm pretty excited actually, if you guys don't know what's going on with the markets and obviously the, um, everything else that's going on, I don't wanna get unmonetized for this video, but um, you guys can tell there's a lot going on in the world right now um, with different things and um, I'm just interested to see what it'll, how it'll affect the real estate market. Um, if anything, and I, I think it will do good. There obviously will be a slowdown period. Uh, but for me, I mean, it's been slow for, for a long time. So I don't know, um, not much will change on my end, but I know um, a down market for real estate could be beneficial as long as uh, I have more tools in my belt pocket for going to homes and helping sellers uh, fix their problems, not just with wholesaling, um, and flipping contracts, but getting into creative finance and subject twos, as you guys know, I'm trying to learn. So I think it's coming at a really good time. Um, don't know if this is gonna, how long it'll last, but uh, I think the next vlog will, or the next few vlogs will be an indication of what's really going on in the market. So if you guys are curious, definitely stick around, go check out the next video when it does come out on Monday. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe to the video, to the channel, if you guys are enjoying the vlogs. I appreciate you guys being here and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Peace.